Well, let's go to our sixth race. Seven furlongs, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. These are conditioned claimers, $30,000 down to $25,000. We want to show you a video. Uh, it was back on uh, October 3rd, and it's a look of a star. He stumbles a little bit at the start, and then we'll switch to the stretch run. And you see him. He closes pretty nicely in there. A claim from Michael uh, Yates, uh, by Petro from Michael Yates. He broke a little slow there in the back, went back, and then when he switches to home, runs pretty good. She does, but uh, let's just play out this backtrack so you can see that uh, she's definitely all out. Boca Chica is riding her for his life. At this point, Princess Toomey's ahead in front. That's the horse on the outside. And look of a star at four to five that afternoon has to battle back inside and uh, ends up sticking the neck out in front as Princess Toomey surged again. Um, you know, I don't know. I, the horse makes a huge uh, barn switch here today to Petro for in Calabrese. This is their special. They claim horses that are in good form, try to move them up even more. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's all I can tell you about Look of a Star. Does she have enough form to win this race? Certainly. Is she going to take money? Certainly. Right. Is she going to be used on my pick four? I, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know yet. The number three, Pearl of the City. This one moved to the Marcus for Taliban via the claim after defeating $15,000 claimers at Churchill. You know the barn is going really well. 22% new claims. Pete, I want to ask you. Now, horses that have run at Churchill and come here, what do you do? Churchill's okay. I don't have well, the... This, uh, I wanted to check the Pete 100 rules of uh, handicapping here. I made a book up of all his excuses, and I didn't see the Churchill one in here. That's why I wanted to ask you about that. I know you don't bet Monmouth Park horses, but we'll look up to Pete's 100 rules of handicapping about Churchill down now. I have to imagine that our fact checker, Ed Gray, had something to do with that book being put together. <laughs> I very much appreciate that. Completely surprised me with that one. Uh, no, Churchill shippers are okay. It's a little bit different surface. If you want me to go into the diatribe about Monmouth shippers. It's very, very simple. The Monmouth Park main track has very little sand in it. It's more of a faster racetrack. It's always played fast. When you come down here to South Florida with all the rain that we get, the track's got a lot more sand in it. So the horses are they're skipping over that surface at Monmouth, and then they come down here, and it's a lot harder for them to get over. Some horses are good enough to do it, some aren't, but I let, I let them beat me. We need uh, six more pages for that book after that explanation. Listen, well, speaking well, of you six, like it here? Well, I, I don't. That's what I was just going to say. If you're starting your pick five and you're following the Pete Aiello logic of pick five wagering for the afternoon, you will not be knocked out in this race because you'll use horses that have chances in here and uh, try to spread as as thinly as you can. I know that doesn't make much sense. In other words, you're going to have to spread, but don't go too crazy because it'll cost you too much to get a viable ticket together. But this is a tough way to kick off the pick five. Well, let's go to race seven. Maybe it'll be easier. Seven furlongs, three and up. Nominators of two in life, $8,000. Scratch uh, number six, I'll be back. There's a unpublished work on the number uh, 10 horse in here over at Gulfstream Park on uh, October 23rd, three furlongs in the slop, 38.31. That's the number 10 horse, Supreme Privilege. We want to show you a video. Oh, back, we're going to go back to June and show you Supreme Privilege uh, running pretty nicely. This was an amazingly good run. This horse missed the start and watch him fly down the center. That's Dean set on the engine there that afternoon. Full disclosure, I liked Dean set that afternoon and I thought I'm home and cooled out at this point. Supreme Privilege is still fourth, but look at the ground that he makes up. He's absolutely flying on. On after not really showing that that's the type of running style he wants to do, he ends up running second to nose that afternoon. Here's the concern, and this is my only concern. He only has one work since that race. He's been off for that long. Dorachenko's not a guy to lay horses off like that unless there's something wrong. So the gamble is what supreme privilege do you get? If you get the one that's run his last two races and is ready to roll in June, here's your single in the pick four. But that's a heck of a gamble. So you have to kind of discern for yourself whether you think this horse is ready to go off the layoff. I personally just think that he's so much the best horse in here that unless he's just not ready, he'll win this race. I don't really care much for some of his competitors, and uh, I'm going to use him on top. I used Little Rock, who's going to try these two lifetime foes after crushing state-bred $10,000 maidens. You got to Won that race you by can... nine lengths. Carlo Vaccarese, Edgar Prado. I think speed's going to be good today, and I think this horse is just going to go... Meow. You gotta rub it in. He crushed a maiden claiming field where Wild Winter was two to five. My choice of the day and uh, would have allowed me to make quite the nice score on the afternoon. I didn't even remember that. Oh, yeah, sure. Everybody on the racetrack knows about Wild Winter losing as it affected me. Little Rocco, as you said, if you think the track is gonna play speed, and if that's what you think, that's what I'm, I'm guessing gonna, right now. Well, listen, I'm not gonna argue with you one bit about it then because Little Rocco draws an inside post and he's back in form. 
well placed for his first start against winners. No argument for me. I use the seven perfect polar underneath. He'll be a nice price. He's coming off the turf course and cutting back in distance. Carlos Marquez had a chance to get acquainted with perfect polar last time. His races at seven furlongs over the main track at Gulfstream Park over the summertime. Uh, he was racing a mile, but he did pretty well in those races. Contended, and I think that if you're looking for a viable alternative to some of the favorites, he might be one. This is a race where you single or you spread. You don't try to use two or three horses and go on with it. Well, the eighth race this afternoon is the one that's my head scratcher. This one originally for the See, turf. Like now, one race. mile maiden, two year olds. Yeah, I had a tough time in here. And I, I mean, I got the 10 on that you have on there, but I went with the four Royal Rogue. I just thought this horse was in such an easy spot on the turf that it was going to be odds on in here. And I just think the class might prevail in here. But really, this is the one I got to go deep with in here. I went with Royal Rogue, but I'm not convinced. It's funny because in this race, if I went on my ticket, I'm going too deep and too deep only. I'll use the nine. T minus on the stretch out for David Fox makes a rider switch to lead to Leandro Gonsalves. But the horse that I like on the main track is the 10 here, JC Universal. Stretches out to two turns on the main track for the first time. I think you'll like that. Now, granted, if Ronnie's right that the main track will play to speed, and it very well might, this horse is going to be in a world of hurt because he's not going to be anywhere near the lead. But uh, his race uh, on the main track, two and three back, are pretty good runs. He ran fifth last time out to G5. G5 was a horse from Pletcher who came back to win. Cool Union Man came back to win. Uh, actually, G5 hasn't run back yet, but Cool Union Man came back to win. JoJo Cool came back to win. And I want to go on the record and say that another horse in that race came back to run well. Don't remember if he won, but that's a productive race. Tricky call race, three backs, not too bad. And the race four back behind Keed for speed. That second place run, that wins this race. So uh, he's going too deep there, and I'm, uh, that's my head scratch. And now we're back to normal where we don't usually agree. Let's go to the ninth race. We can agree we'll on that. We'll probably agree on this because it's impassable. Let's see. Drum roll, please. Well, seven, we're going to show a, a replay ah, of the race. Top two. I do top, it. Yeah, well, let's go. Seven furlong starter option claim a three and up. But I want to show you uh, that uh, race nine on uh, back on October 2nd. Rock Alex uh, finishing third. But the horse that finished third behind, Bahamian Squall, Purple Leg. These are some nice horses. Oh, you're using the company line angle on me? You're going to hit me right between the eyes. Look, the horse on the engine there, Bahamian Squall, uh, he's, happened to be, he's happened to be at Santa Anita at the moment preparing for a little race called the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Purple leg down the outside, the four horse that afternoon is a stakes winner. And Rock Alex, you see, just getting up for third that afternoon under jockey uh, Edgar Prado. Edgar gets the re-ride here this afternoon. Those company lines and that race, uh, Rock Alex very, very good that afternoon. He moves up on a main or wet track. He likes it wet, and uh, he is capable. Rock Alex on his best game, there's, there's no other horses in here that can contend with him. Uh, Rock Alex on his B game, uh, which could very well win this race. If he's on his B game, he'll have to run with the eight Native Gold, who I used on top. Native Gold, when he's on his best game, is very, very good. He was a winner last time against uh, Odds On himself. The winner of that, or the second place horse that afternoon, Dude Man, came back to crush allowance horses here this week. So that bodes well for number eight, Native Gold. He's keeping good company, and he's in good firm for Kirk City. Yeah, just a couple of stats. You're talking about the wet weather. Uh, uh, Rock Alex, six starts, three wins, a second and a third. Native Gold, perfect. Two for two on a wet track. Also threw in the one Duke Duke ret uh, returning to the Gulfstream Park West dirt course. Five wins on this course after back-to-back -back wins against $25,000 optional claimants on the turf. Four for five in the money on the wet track. I think this is going to translate to maybe not win, but be on the ticket. Because I don't think anybody's going to beat Ra Rock Alex. I'm here. not going to argue with you, but I'm going to go too deep. Six, eight in my pick five. If you're keeping score at home, six, eight in my pick five only. Well, let's go to race 10, five furlongs. This originally scheduled for the turf, now on a sloppy main track, at least sloppy right now. We'll see how the day progresses. Maidens, uh, three-year-olds, and upward scratch the six, very colorful, also scratch the number 11, Simon Barr, Sinister. I went to the one horse in here, pure talent, and you went with the five, Montana Cowboy. Yeah, the, we picked the same three horses in here. This race is very, very tough. This is a race you want to spread in your pick five. Of course, Ronnie and I are going to land on the same three. The one pure talent is the son of Chetane, who was a graded stakes winner of the Gulfstream Park main track. He draws an inside post and should use his speed effectively. Montana Cowboy will be lapped on him under jockey Edgar Zayas. Montana Cowboy, even money last time out against just an okay field. That was off the strength of a third place run as the favorite two starts ago. That was against a very, very strong field. And how about this angle, talking about horses going to the Breeders' Cup sprint. These are maidens, and Montana Cowboy got beat two lengths to Fast Anna, who is campaigning for Kathy Ritvo yeah. in the Breeders' Cup sprint. 
any of his uh, first two races, there's no other horse in here can touch it. Yeah, and pure talent. Uh, I like pure talent a little bit more. I like that work. 47 and two, uh, a bullet half mile drill over at Gulfstream Park last time out. Sets him up perfectly for this race today. I like the fact uh, this horse a lot more now that it moved to the main track. Montana Cowboy, for all the reasons you meant. Then I went with the nine, Medley May, because my thinking was today's speed. This horse showed speed on the synthetic surface at Presque Isle. Son of Dixie Union, bred to run okay on the wet track. Could be gone early. That's why I use that horse. Well, I agree with you. The horse is interesting. Goes out for a barn in Kevin Rice, who we haven't seen much of in South Florida. The dope on Kevin Rice is very, very good. He does very, very well with his stock. Uh, this horse was well regarded in Pennsylvania last time out. Went favored, and I'm sure the horses are people who backed him when he's two on top at the first call. Thought, wow, this is stealing money. Everything's easy. The wheels kind of fell off that afternoon. He ended up only beating two home. Time was pretty good, though. 11-2 and two over the Tapita for six furlong maidens. Not a bad time. Gets a rider switch to Jose Garcia. I think that's pretty wise of trainer Kevin Rice here because he's an out-of-town conditioner. The riders may not know who he is. He might as well go with an out-of-town guy and Jose Garcia, who knows the South Florida circuit. Jose was based here for a lot of years, but he also went to the summer at Presque Isle. So he's bringing a Presque Isle rider who's familiar with South Florida. Madly May may be a horse that could contend here. Very, very tough race. He's looking at the 100 rules of handicapping again. I think that's very, very clever. Speaking of very clever, you'll have to be clever here today with a pick five and pick six sequence that is very, very tough. Yeah, I'm just having a little fun with you on that, but I love your different angles, and you hold true to them, whether you win or lose, I like that about you. As Pete mentioned, we're dealing with a sloppy track this afternoon. We do have carryovers in the Rainbow Six and the Pick Five, and these are one of the perfect days, especially if you know how to handicap for off track, uh, maybe to bring down both of those pools. Well, I'm, I don't know about the Rainbow Six. I'm going to play the Pick Five. I think I'll go something like four by two by two by four by three, something like that. I don't know how much that is. It sounds fairly expensive. Maybe I'll pare that down. But the uh, pick five here this afternoon will offer you value no matter which way you slice it. It's a very competitive racing card with all the races on the main track here today. Take note of how the main track plays early on. Well, that's it for us from here for now. And we'll see you in a little bit. Pete will be up there with his dulcet tones. And I'll be down here trying to give you some useful insights. We'll get you caught up on all the changes in just a few moments. Have a great day today and good luck.